When you have a geometry where the cross section remains the same along an axis, or when the object is rotationally symmetric about an axis, it can be efficient to first create the geometry for the cross section, and then expand it into a 3D object. In Comsol Multiphysics, you can create 3D geometries from 2D models. This is accomplished through the use of work planes and plane geometry, in addition to performing work plane operations, such as the extrude, revolve, and sweep operations. Let's begin by extruding a 2D geometry into a 3D geometry. The extrude operation is used to extrude planar faces or objects from a work plane into a 3D object. You'll notice here we have open the exact same geometry that was built in our video showing you how to create a 2D geometry. If you are following along with us in this tutorial and have the model open, you'll want to change the H parameter in the table to H1. This is because it's used by the sweep operation, which we will be performing later on. Now, since we are building a 3D geometry, we will want to click on the Home tab, click Add Component, and select a 3D component. This is where the 3D geometry will be contained. Now, we will want to click the Geometry tab and add a work plane. And this is where our 2D geometry is going to be contained within our 3D component. Once we have added the work plane, you'll notice it's displayed with the default settings in the graphics window. We can change the layout of the work plane by changing any of the settings. Under plane type, this is where we determine how the work plane is defined. Quick quickly selects any of the planes in our global coordinate system, such as the XY plane, YZ plane, and so on. We also have several other options for the plane type, as you can see here. To learn more about each of these options, please see page 477 of your COMSOL reference manual. We'll continue with the default plane type quick, and we will also continue on with the default selection for the plane and build our geometry in the XY plane. We will also use the default settings for the offset type and Z coordinate to specify the distance our work plane is from the coordinate plane along the third axis, the Z axis. Now with our work plane generated, we can go under the plane geometry node, and this is where we will create our 2D geometry. The 2D geometry that we want to extrude here is contained in our first component. So what we can do here is we can click import, and then under source, we can select geometry sequence, and then under geometry, we can choose geometry one to pull the geometry sequence from the first component. Now we can click import, and our 2D geometry has been generated. You can also create the 2D plane geometry by importing a geometry file, or by simply drawing it through adding primitives, or drawing it within the graphics window itself. If we return back to the plane geometry node, you notice we have the option to view the work plane geometry in 3D. So if we select that, you can see our work plane appear in the graphics window in 3D space. Now that we have finished defining our plane geometry, we can select the work plane node. So now we've returned back to our 3D geometry and click build all to again see our plane geometry. And now we can click extrude to add the extrude operation. Under extrude from, we can choose to extrude from a work plane or a face in our geometry. Since that is where our geometry is defined, and again, we want to select work plane one, which contains our plane geometry as shown under the input object section. We will also want to leave the Unite with Input Objects checkbox toggled on so that the planar object is united with the extruded object. Now under Distances from Plane, this is where we can specify how far we want our plane geometry to be extruded from the work plane. 
Let's enter four centimeters. Notice that I specified the unit using brackets. This is important, otherwise the numerical value we enter takes on the software's default unit for length, which would be meters. And further down, you can see we can also choose to reverse the direction if we would like, as well as other options. Let's click Build All. And you can see we have just extruded our 2D geometry into a 3D object. Please note that when creating a 3D object from a 2D geometry, you will always need to return to the 3D portion of the geometry sequence. From there, you can add the respective geometry operation to convert your 2D geometry. You can see if I were to right click any sub node under our work plane node that the extrude operation is not available. However, if I right click any of the nodes within our 3D portion, the extrude operation is available. Now let's turn our attention to using the revolve operation and revolve a 2D geometry into a 3D object. The revolve operation is used to revolve planar faces or objects from a work plane about an axis to create a 3D geometry. Once again, since we are creating a 3D geometry, we want to add a 3D component. And again, we will want to first define our plane geometry in a work plane. First off, since we plan to revolve a circle into a torus, let's change the plane to the YZ plane. And now under plane geometry, this is where we are going to build our circle object. So we can click primitives and select circle. Now let's change the settings for the radius. Let's make it five centimeters. And let's leave the position centered at the origin. Click build all and we have the circle generated, and under plane geometry, we can again view the work plane in 3D. And now that we have built our plane geometry, we can add the revolve operation to revolve our planar object. We do this by going under the work plane node, and now since we are in our 3D geometry sequence, we can click the revolve button. And here is where we will revolve our 2D object. Let's go through some of the settings. Under Revolve From, we can revolve our planar geometry from a work plane, or we can select a face or boundary in a 3D geometry to revolve, but we will leave it at the work plane setting. And under Work Plane, you select the work plane which you want to revolve objects from, and this would be Work Plane 1 in our geometry sequence, which is confirmed under our Input Objects section. Again, we want to leave the Unite with Input Objects checkbox toggled on. And under Revolution Angles, we can revolve the object 360 degrees or 2 pi radians and thus perform a full revolution. Or we can select Angles to specify a start and end angle. Let's leave our setting to full revolution. And then under Revolution Axis, this is where we specify the axis about which our object will revolve. Under 2D, an axis is defined in the local coordinate system, which would be the work plane's coordinate system. Or you can select 3D, in which you specify the axis in the 3D coordinate system. So let us select 3D. And first off, for the direction of the revolution axis, we want to revolve our circle around the Z axis, so we change our values to reflect that by entering 0 for the Y and 1 for the Z. So that way we are revolving around our Z axis. And then for the point on the revolution axis, this is where we need to specify a point from which our geometry will be revolved around from the revolution axis. So let's displace our work plane about 10 centimeters along the Y axis. And you can see we have that space between our revolution axis and our work plane, which will be revolved around it. And now we can click Build All. And you can see our torus has been created. If we were to change the point along our revolution axis, 
let's say making it 0 0.5 meters. This makes our torus much wider since we are displaced much further from our revolution axis. Lastly, let's perform a sweep operation and convert a 2D line curve into a 3D pipeline. The sweep operation is used to sweep planar faces or objects from a work plane along a curve to create a solid 3D object. So first off, again, we will need to add a 3D component since we are creating a 3D geometry and we will need to add a work plane. Let's leave it with the default settings as is and go under plane geometry. Here we are going to use the line and quadratic segments to create a path through which we will sweep another 2D planar object defined on a separate work plane. So first we'll start off with defining a line and we will definitely want this to start at the origin and we left click to start the first point and then when we want the segment to end we can left click again and to create the object for this segment we right click and you can see it has been added under our geometry sequence for the plane geometry. Now let's use a quadratic segment. Again, we can left click and then now we are going to be defining the midpoint for our curve. So we again will left click for the midpoint and then you can see our curve start to form and here I can click again and I just continue on a little further, left click again, and from here, once more we can left click, and then if I right click, that curve segment has been added, and we can adjust the type to be an open curve, which we can sweep our object through. So now again, I can add another line. I will left click, and then left click again, and right click to lock that object in, and add it to our geometry sequence. And once more, I will add another quadratic segment, make this curve a bit wider, right click to add it, change the type to open curve, and again, finish with another straight line segment. Now that we've defined the path for our object to sweep through, we'll want to create a separate work plane which will contain our 2D planar object. So we click work plane again. And this time we want the plane to be along the XZ plane. From here, we go under plane geometry and you can see the start point of our path. And here I'm going to quickly just draw a circle in the graphics window, return to the plane geometry node, visualize it in 3D, and maybe we'll just adjust those settings, make it slightly smaller. And now we are ready to add our sweep operation. So again, I can return to any of the work plane nodes to be working within the 3D geometry sequence. And now I can add the sweep operation. And under faces to sweep, we will want to select the circle object we defined in one of our work planes. And under Create Cross-Sectional Faces, we will leave this option toggled on. This creates cross-sectional faces between sweep sections. And this is good in case you want to specify the mesh distribution for each section of the sweep. It also enables you to assign different materials to different regions. Now that we've finished selecting our faces to sweep, we can toggle on the active switch under Edges to Follow and we can go ahead and select all of our edges or line segments we defined in our work plane. Now we can click build all objects and we have performed our sweep operation and converted our 2D planar geometry into a 3D object. You'll notice if I deselect create cross-sectional faces, those changes are reflected in the 3D object that was generated. Although in this demonstration, we performed our sweep over a planar curve, you can also sweep over 3D curves as well. For instance, you could create the sweep path you wanted in 3D 
using a parametric curve operation. Then, just as we did earlier, select the surface you want to sweep, and then generate a 3D object over that spine curve, now defined in 3D space. In terms of when to use the sweep operation versus the extrude operation, a good rule of thumb is to identify whether you are sweeping along a straight line or not. If you are not sweeping along a straight line, we recommend using a sweep operation. However, if you are, then extruding would be an easier alternative than having to create a line path. With that, we have showed you how you can create a 3D geometry from a 2D geometry. As we went about creating this geometry, you will notice we built each example using the same procedure. We first created a 3D component so that our geometry we created could be expanded into a 3D object. Then, we defined a work plane within the component. From there, we either imported a 2D geometry sequence or file, or we built the plane geometry right within the work plane. Once finished, we extended our 2D geometry into a 3D geometry, utilizing the extrude, revolve, and sweep work plane operations.